I was having to think about what video I wanted to make today when I was scrolling through my Steam list and I came across a personal favourite of mine, Dirty Bomb. Then it got me thinking, this game really doesn't receive as much love as it should, so that's what this video is going to be about giving a spotlight to the games I think need more love. Now about the game, since this game is free to play, you should probably just try it yourself instead of listening to me. But as a quick description about the game itself, Dirty Bomb is an FPS in which you play 20 different mercenaries. But as a quick description about the game itself, Dirty Bomb is an FPS in which you play as 20 different mercenaries which have their own special abilities which benefit the team equally. You have medics, which each have their own benefit to healing, such as Sparks. Call me Sparks. I heal, I kill. Is ironic paradox, yada yada. Who is fairly fragile in 1v1 combat, but has a long range revive gun which can resurrect players and throw med packs around for individual players. Or there's Phoenix. Now make sure you eat plenty of fruit. Who has revive paddles, an AoE heal, and is more tough in 1v1 combat as well as being able to self-resurrect himself if he is downed. Then you've got the recon mercs. Those folks are the snipers or single target classes. You've got Red Eye. I've shot smarter crooks than you. The Aussie who throws smoke grenades and his ability allows himself to see through that smoke and pick targets off. Come to think of it, it's actually a lot like Glaz in Rainbow Six. And then there's Phantom. And I say the magic word, abracadabra do, but psh who is somewhat similar to the spy in Team Fortress 2, who cloaks himself, allowing himself to pass through enemy lines and stab players in the back, dealing massive damage. Next, you have the engineers. Engineers can repair and disarm objectives at an extremely fast rate, as well as set up traps around suspecting players. There's Proxy. Proxy's the name, proximity mines is the game. Who can place down proximity mines. Fletcher. Here is what I will do for you. I will fix and repair things very fast, and I will shoot enemies with my shotgun, and I will plant sticky bombs, and this is why I am your best friend. Next up are the fire support classes. These mercenaries specialize in suppressing other players typically with AoE abilities. They also supply ammunition as well as destroying the objective with ease. You have Skyhammer. Dig a trench or bugger off, here comes the thunder! Who calls in an airstrike and supplies ammo. Kira. Take cover, or pray, or both, for here is fire from the sky! Who calls in an orbital assault. <laughs> Lastly, there's the assault classes, who are primarily there just to fuck shit up. You have Nader. Better luck next time, dead person. Whose special ability is to use her grenade launcher. She can also kill herself with a grenade as a last ditch attempt to kill her foe. Kinda like when Junkrat dies in Overwatch. Then there's Rhino. My French is rusty and my German's poor, but I can tell you're angry. Who uses a minigun and is extremely beefy. That wasn't brief at all, was it? Oh, my bad. But that aside, with the whole loot box controversy going on, I feel like I have to say this right now. Dirty Bomb does have that loot box system. However, before you start getting all angry about it, its business model is very fair. To start off with, there are daily play bonuses, as well as missions which give you tasks to play different players and game modes that unlock even more cash. There are loadout cards for each merc. These loadouts contain different weapons and abilities that give your player a slight boosted effect to your abilities. But listen, these loadouts aren't locked to a randomized system like Star Wars Battlefront. You can also go into the store and look for that exact loadout that you want and unlock it with credits you earn or alternatively, recycle the cards you don't want and upgrade one. There are also free mercs on rotation every week. Moving on to the actual gameplay side of things. This is one of those games that's easy to learn but very hard to master. There's going to be a good chance that when you start off, you're going to get crushed by more experienced players frequently. And I'm sorry to say this, but if you're really easily discouraged, you may not like this game. The controls are easy to learn, as you only need to remember what two buttons are your special abilities. You've also been given the freedom to wall jump into shortcuts through each map. While it's hard to learn at first, you'll quickly pick it up and feel like a master as you jump over the heads of the scrub players taking those stairs. 
Making accurate shots is as easy as lemon flavored squeezy pie. Recall is pretty much non-existent, but you will need to always aim for the head if you're going to play against the pros. The amount of times I've seen people bragging about how great they are at other FPS games and how this game is garbage just because they keep dying is hilarious. Dirty Bomb isn't like most FPS games. It's much more fast paced so you need to rely on your team's ability to carry out their role much more. And also, if you don't play as a team, you're not going to win. So if you think you can lone wolf it against an entire team, you're not going to do it. I'm sorry, I don't care how good you are, you will not win. There are three different game modes to choose from. Objective, which typically lasts 15 minutes, in which you are put on the attacking or defending side and must stop the opposing team by either destroying or delivering an objective. Stopwatch, which is the same as objective, except you take turns as playing as the attackers and the defenders. Lastly, elimination, which is your typical team deathmatch, except once you die, you can't respawn. Overall, I would highly recommend this game to anyone looking for something new to play as you don't need to spend a penny on this. It's fast paced and really gets your heart racing at times, but at the end of the day, you don't leave feeling frustrated. It's also a highly flexible game with a range of classes and mercs to choose from, and doesn't give a game breaking advantage to those players who have spent more time and money into it. However, if you're the kind of person who gives up easily, I wouldn't recommend this. This has been Lee, thanks for watching.